Good evening, and welcome to our midweek Lenten Vespers this evening. Uh, just a couple of notes on this evening's service. First of all, uh, if you haven't found them, the offering plates are at the back, so uh, we will not be collecting offering during this midweek service. So um, if you did bring offering, we thank you for your gifts, and you can put them back in those offering plates. Also, just a friendly reminder that your, your little booklet that you got at the entrance that looks like this, mine is huge because it's the leader's edition, uh, it's not a souvenir for you to take home. So please, uh, if you could graciously at the back, uh, uh, set it on the table at the back on your way out this evening. We, uh, we love to reuse those and they're not terribly cheap, so... Um, with that, let, uh, everything you will need will be in that booklet this evening, so, so with that, let us begin our worship together. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people
Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O God, I call to you, come to Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hand as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God, deep in my heart, may the light of your love be burning bright. Let my prayer And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our first reading for this evening is taken from Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught the Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. Here ends the reading. And as you are comfortable, I invite you to rise for the reading of the gospel. Our holy gospel for this evening is taken from Matthew, the 13th chapter. Then the disciples came and asked Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. I'm going to come way down here. The back row can't save you now. You hear me. But are you actually listening? Tonight's theme 
is open my ears, Lord. And it seems that most of the time when someone is listening, they could be doing something as sim simple or menial or as pretending to care, but waiting their turn to talk. Just hearing someone is not the same as compassionate listening. Don't worry, most of us have, have, we all have this problem. In fact, I would say most of us lean towards being the world's worst listener than being the world's best. How good of a listener are you? Is it in one ear and out the other? Or are you truly an empathetic ear? Are you a fixer? Trying to give advice as soon as you have the chance to speak? Or do you listen with that compassion and let the one sharing their story just be? Letting their perceptions and their experiences hang there with authenticity. That's where tonight's theme comes in. That's where we're going with this. How is God opening your ears to hear what you need to actually hear and listen to what you actually need to listen to? In our gospel reading this evening, Jesus' disciples are asking him why he speaks in parables. Why is he speaking in these riddles that nobody can understand, these confusing stories that most common folk have a hard time understanding or interpreting or not even knowing where to start with them. And really, if we're being honest, I think the disciples ask that because the disciples are just as confused as well. But Jesus, Jesus tells them something. He basically says uh, to his disciples that it is in the prophecy of Isaiah that they would understand his parables and that these common people who are maybe, they're hearing the words, but they're not quite grasping what, what is being said. These common people would have a hard time. Jesus also tells his disciples that if they are truly listening, they will understand. And that goes for us right now. If we are truly listening to those parables, we will understand. God will open up your eyes, your ears, your hearts in order to perceive these things. The parables that Jesus tells all point to one thing. Whether we know it or not, it points to the cross. The cross that Jesus would eventually die on and rise again for the sake of the world. For the forgiveness of sin. For the promise of eternal life. So this Lenten season, we are encouraged to listen closely. What is God saying to you? How is God working through you? Pay attention to the world around you. What are people saying and what are you perceiving? One of the best ways to show love is by listening. Is, these, is to not just hear, but to listen. And various studies have shown um, that there are three main keys to effective listening. There's way more, but I found three of them that really stuck out to me. First, don't just hear what the person has to say. Give your full, undivided attention. Close the laptop. Put the tablet away. Put the smartwatch away. Put the cell phone away. Full, undivided attention. Next, do silent listening. And what is silent listening, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you. Um, 
Think of it as in your elementary days when the teacher would ask you to silently read. You do the same thing with listening. So when someone is telling you something, especially very, very, uh, very confidential or very vulnerable, it helps to it, it helps to uh, where am I at now? It helps to silently repeat what the speaker is saying to you. So it's kind of like you're silently reading the words on a page, but you're silently repeating what the person is saying. It sounds weird, but if you actually do it, it makes sense. And then, um, and finally, think of the listening session as a conversation. Ask questions to clarify or to dig deeper. That's a great way of compassionate listening because I don't know about you, but if I were to walk up to you and say, hey, what's your story? It's a little weird, doesn't it? So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good are you at listening? And the 4-year-old, probably not so much, but um, and to be honest, and let's be honest with ourselves, though. God opens up our ears and calls you to certain interactions in life for a host of different reasons, and a lot of times, we don't know why, and a lot of times these interactions might be kind of hard. But the love of Jesus on the cross is one of those things that God opens our ears to hear through Jesus' teaching of the parables. Much like the disciples, Jesus calls each and every one of you to open your ears and truly listen to what God has to say and listen to one another without trying to fix, without judgment, without malice. This Lent and always. Choose to listen with compassion and empathy as God in Jesus Christ promises to hear and listen to you as the beloved child of God that you have been created to be. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to so highly favored for God is with you. You shall bear a child and his name shall be Jesus the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said I am
strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your Great and merciful God, source and ground all goodness and life. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever life for our life. May the spirit of love be 
our guide and path. 